it's so interesting how all these things are tied together. It's almost like if you pull a string, pull out a string in a sweater, and it all just kind of starts unraveling to reveal. Um, that's a bad analogy. <laughs> your body. It reveals your exterior <laughs> body and your interior life. <laughs> I am so sorry. I'm not that's making okay. any sense right now. <laughs> Welcome back to the Modern Lady Podcast. You're listening to episode 82. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Lindsay, and today we are talking about gratitude. Tis the season to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Fall wouldn't be complete without the celebration of Thanksgiving, an October occasion for us Canadians. But being thankful shouldn't be a a one-day-a-year virtue. Having a grateful disposition can radically change our perspectives and is never more important than when complaints and ingratitude seem ever more prevailing in the wider world. But first, if you enjoy this episode of the Modern Lady Podcast, would you please take a minute to rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast? When we receive ratings and reviews, our podcast becomes more visible and easier to find for new listeners. We would also love it if you share this episode with your friends. Let us know what you think. Your comments mean the world to us. This week's shout out goes to Mon Esther, who left us a five star rating on iTunes and commented, quote, finally, I've found what I've been searching for, a podcast that respects the role of homemaking and recognizes the dignity of it. Absolutely love this podcast. It has brought so much joy to my homemaking, friends and family I've shared it with. Thank you ladies for all you do. Also so excited that you are Canadian, end quote. Thank you so much for your comment, Mon Esther. We love and are so grateful to this sisterhood of a community that has formed around the podcast, made up of incredible and joyful women like you. Thank you so much for your support. And if you would like to leave us a comment, you can do so on our website, www.themodernlady1950.wordpress.com, or you can leave us a comment on Facebook or Instagram, where you can find us at The Modern Lady Podcast. But before we get into today's chat, Lindsay has our Modern Lady Tip of the Week. I've been watching a lot of the Donna Reed show lately, and while I'm fully aware that it's just a TV show, I am still struck by how beautiful she looks while serving breakfast. I have long desired to walk down to our kitchen, already dressed for the day, smiling in my lipstick and apron as I pop Eggo waffles into the toaster. But right now I stumble down the stairs in the same leggings that I slept in after wearing them the day before, puffy eyed and mumbling good morning to my family. So what did the morning beauty routine look like for the 1950s housewife? Well, she started her day by cleaning her own body first. What's that you say? That's right, she had a bath. Not a shower like today's woman, a morning bath, and she used an all-purpose soap bar like sunlight or palm olive to cleanse herself, and then she would likely use that bar in her laundry after. Women would brighten their eyes each morning using a splash of cold water, and then twice a week, women would bathe their eyes using tepid water and an eye cup. I had no idea this was even a thing until I saw them on the Antiques Roadshow someone collects eye cups. They look like egg cups, but are more oval with long sides curving in in order to fit snug against the eye socket. Now be sure to prevent a double chin by using friction. Slap your face vigorously upwards with a cold, wet cloth that you pressed flat. After her bath, most women would cleanse their face with just cold water and mild soap. After using some witch hazel as a toner, women would moisturize their faces with cold cream and apply, at the very least, a little face powder and some lipstick before heading down to start breakfast. Now toss a pretty scarf around your head, which is still covered with rollers that you slept in, and put on a pretty house coat, and you can go down and fix breakfast for your family. I actually love the idea of doing this, and, you know, the truth is, all joking aside, I do roll out of bed. And I do brush, I do brush my teeth before greeting the family, but 
I, I do rush downstairs and I would love to put on a little makeup, you know, and greet the family that way. So anyways, I talked about it this morning while watching the Donna Reed show with my son. And he's like, you know, mom, that might be a great idea. Waking up like an hour before us and putting on a dress <laughs> and you're all of your makeup. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. You would like that. All right. Um, well, I've got some tips here now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm just kind of stuck on slapping myself in the face. Right. That would the, wake you with up. A cold, wet towel. No right? kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and, and definitely prevent those double chins. I mean, there's got to be some science there. Oh, yeah. Even just the vigor with which you would need to swing the towel up can double as cardio. And Absolutely. we're all about efficiency in these modern times. I have to say, though, I have actually started the last few years putting on makeup. Like before in the morning you go down. and getting dressed before I get my kids up. And it does make a big difference. I'm, if I don't make it, I do notice a difference how I feel trying to get them ready for the day while I'm still in my pajamas. I don't oh. like it anymore. So it does make a difference. Roman Senator Cicero once said, quote, Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. End quote. It seems to come naturally to us to focus on the importance of gratitude this time of year, but as Cicero says, its importance actually warrants a serious and constant cultivation of it. Right, Lindsay? That's right. Well, Michelle, there's a story about a man in Budapest who goes to a mm. rabbi and he complains, life is unbearable. There are nine of us living in one room. What can I do? The rabbi answered, take your goat into the room with you. The man was incredulous, but the rabbi insisted, do as I say and come back in a week. A week later, the man came back looking more distraught than before. We cannot stand it, he told the rabbi. The goat is filthy. The rabbi then tells him, go home and let the goat out and then come back in a week. A radiant man returned to the rabbi a week later, exclaiming, life is beautiful. We enjoy every moment of it now that there's no goat, only the nine of us. Michelle, if that doesn't sum up <laughs> gratitude, right? It's like sometimes yes. we don't know what we have until we add a goat in. Yeah. Um, truly, that story is the goat, uh, as the oh, kids oh. say these days, you know, which means for those who may not know, like me, two seconds ago, I had to look it up. It means the greatest <laughs> of all time. Yes. <laughs> the story is the goat. There you go. But yeah, it's, it's true. A lot of what I've been thinking about and reflecting on about gratitude lately really comes back to um, perspective, like perspective factors so heavily into whether or not I can feel gratitude, practice gratitude. But it does seem like uh, there's so much to complain about in the world today that perhaps it's good to revisit what actual gratitude looks like and how we can feel it mm -hmm. <laughs> even amidst these times. And I always start then with a definition, right? So we tend right. to Google exactly what it means. And so, you know, being the Modern Lady podcast, we look up the Catholic definition and then we look up the worldly definition. And according to catholicculture.org, the definition is Quote, the virtue by which a person acknowledges interiorly and exteriorly gifts receives, received and seeks to make at least some return for the gift conferred. Now, the non-Catholic definition was so blah. Everywhere I looked it up, it just simply said the state of being grateful. And I was like, okay, but yeah, like, what does that mean then, right? Somebody yeah. would read that and think, yeah, okay, well, still, I don't understand. So I love the Catholic definition because it, of course, it mentions the interior and the exterior. And anyone who has worked on growing in their spiritual life will tell you that, you know, often in most of our lives, our interior life and our exterior life are misaligned and they need to be brought into agreement with each other. Yeah. You know what? That point really struck me too, that whole idea about the interior and the exterior doing the same things at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, it's, I suppose it's different then from, uh, from the act of something that you would want to do more in secret, like you're a practice of a devotion or mm -hmm. um, you're practicing fasting or you're practicing in prayer, something like that. And then on the exterior, you, you know, don't walk around with your face drawn or something mm -hmm. like that. Whereas with gratitude, it really is something that you seek to find interiorly so that it can kind of overspill out into your exterior too. You want for those two things to be aligned. And I think that's a really, a really interesting thought. 
I love that. You're right. And so a genuinely grateful heart, right? Like Mm -hmm. we physically mean the interior, like your heart. (laughs) Um, But that one that is genuinely grateful that it would overflow then, right? Like it would overflow with love and it would seek to express itself by sharing with somebody, you know, what you're thankful for um, in your words. You can share it like that or by doing deeds that show how thankful you are. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, I found this to be really interesting and I'm sure you came across this too. The link between jealousy and gratitude. So a heart that is incapable of being thankful is often, you know, in someone who is always looking for more and more that desire to have more and more and more. And that desire to, to always have more often comes from a place of jealousy, right? Of being Mm. covetous of what your neighbors have. And I'm guessing the whole thou shalt not covet um, is it has been around for a while considering it's part of the 10 commandments. So this isn't anything new here, but when we covet things that we see in the lives of others, whether it's material things or a lifestyle that we, that they have, like they get to take vacations that you don't get to take, or sometimes even how many children that they have. Um, or if, if they have a marriage that looks really, really good when we covet these things, we think then somehow we deserve them as well, that mm-hmm. we were denied them. Right. Mm-hmm. And that we, that we deserve the blessings that they have. And so when we walk around convincing ourselves that we also deserve a nice house or a new car or a weekend away, or a husband that helps without having to be asked it, therefore inevitably will impact our ability to properly see what we do have. And like you were saying earlier, then it, we've lost our perspective. It comes down to perspective. Mm-hmm. It's true. And I, I, on that note, I've often thought that it is really tied to the virtue of humility then, Mm -hmm. right? And if the perspective is that everything we are and everything that we do have in this life is pure gift, that we did not merit it ourselves, Mm -hmm. then we can't uh, have those feelings of jealousy or envy because we we recognize that we weren't necessarily, we didn't have a right to any of the good things that we have in our life in the first place. And naturally, even saying it out loud right now, like naturally that would lead someone to be grateful. Yeah. I love that you brought up humility because, you know, as Catholics, we understand that humility likes a few other things is really one of the cornerstones of the virtues and really does underpin everything. And I think that it's something not talked about at all in the secular world. Like you could almost go through your whole life and never hear the word humility. And yet it's talked about in Mm. so many of our conversations. And I think that when we finally grasp what true humility is, and this is something I've only learned in the last year, I think that everybody can agree about how important it is. But I think that we mistakenly think of humility as just always talking down about ourselves and, and, that we have to completely underestimate our gifts. So it's not that. It's also not the building up of ourselves. It's just truly seeing ourselves and understanding ourselves as who we are, right? Like a real mm-hmm. understanding of, of where we're at, what we're good at, what we're not good at, but just a good understanding of where we are. And for you and I, that's also trying to see ourselves as how God would see us. And when we do this, when we can really detach and see ourselves as the person that we are right now for good and for bad, then we understand that we're getting exactly what we deserve based on Mm. our state in life and some of the actions that we have done and how we are living our lives. And then we don't need to look at and compare ourselves to others. We can just focus on ourselves and on our faults and on our weaknesses and also the things that we are good at. And then we understand that everything that we are doing wrong is our own fault. (laughs) And that everything that is wonderful and good and noble in our lives that we should, you know, be thankful that God has blessed those that has given us those graces. Um, one mm-hmm. of my favorite priests always says, you know, everything good comes from God and I am responsible for everything else in my life. And I think yes. that that is what true humility is. Yeah. And you can see like, just by going through that definition, how, when you recognize you've been given everything that you need and mm-hmm. everything that is necessary for you to be exactly who uh, God means for you to be and what mm-hmm. he wants you to be realized as, um, then you can see how God has been giving those same graces to the other people that you've been looking at and maybe you've been comparing yourself with, but that person has been receiving different gifts because they have a different uh 
plan. Uh, God has a different plan for them. And so they have different needs. And when you can put that back on yourself, then it erases the jealousy and it turns your heart to just sitting restfully, as it were. You don't have to be frantic. Like you, you don't have to be constantly seeking out that which was never maybe meant for you. And you can it kind of clears away the cobwebs for you to see clearly then what exactly it is that you have and why you may have it. Yeah. And, you know, we're living in this age, this it's, it's never happened before that we've had such an opportunity to peek into the private lives into, you know, to be a voyeur in so many people's lives um, Mm -hmm. until now because Mm -hmm. of social media. And, and we've talked about social media before we've talked about jealousy and all of these things. Um, But it has, that really has also warped our perspective on life. And then we start thinking that we're the judge and jury and determining, yeah, what everybody deserves and doesn't deserve and what we deserve. And this really then breeds ingratitude. And again, this isn't anything new, even though social media, I think has magnified this. We look at the lepers in the Bible, right? Only one out of the 10 came back to thank Jesus for having cured them. Leprosy. Like it doesn't Mm. often get worse than leprosy. We don't even know (laughs) because we've never (laughs) seen leprosy, but it was so Mm -hmm. bad and so painful and so foul and just so contagious Mm. and so awful that these people were made to live completely isolated outside of the town, right? So can you imagine being more miraculously cured of that 10 of you Mm -hmm. and only one of you goes back to thank the man that that healed you um saint bernard said later that ingratitude is a searing wind which dries up the springs of of pity the dew of mercy and the streams of grace ingratitude can lead to isolation from those who we love we can isolate ourselves from god when we turn a blind eye to all that he has given us so We definitely want to cultivate the virtue of gratitude and we want to acknowledge what severing ties in gratitude can bring into our lives. Mm -hmm, That's true. And I like what you're saying there. Like it's an act, it's an action to Mm -hmm. be cultivating something and to be rejecting the inverse of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm just always so struck. It's such an interesting note, note to me when I realize it once again, that much like the practice of almost all the other virtues, In fact, all the other virtues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I confuse like diligent growth in virtue with something that's supposed to feel good in the moment. Oh, yeah, right. (laughs) And I feel like gratitude is exactly one of those things. Like when you say like someone is that person is so full of gratitude. I know the image in my mind conjures up like this person who's kind of like on cloud nine all the time and they're whistling while they work and they're always just so serene and peaceful. I'm sure that a a perfection in the virtue of gratitude results in something like that, but Mm -hmm. the actual growth in it, the Mm -hmm. practicing of it, I'm learning that this is not almost always not the case. Mm -hmm. Um, It actually, instead of feeling better in the moment, sometimes it's easier to seethe at an injustice or to pout or complain about something that you don't have it feels better to do that (laughs) but so then yeah the trick is to ignore those baser emotions and feelings and to really dutifully practice gratitude in the moment anyways in spite of that and uh, you know it's actually probably a great form of mortification when it comes down to that That's right. And like what you're saying, when it can be painful to grow in these virtues, there is one prayer that we have talked about many times that is incredibly painful to pray. The prayer Um, that shall not be named. Tell you. Yes. <laughs> we should call it yes oh and you know what let me just say and I don't think it's I think it's okay to share that that prayer the prayer that shall not be named was given to me as my penance and confession yesterday and I cried out no and I've never done that <laughs> when being administered a penance before but That's um hilarious you know we we will name it in a minute but um for those of you who don't know what we're talking about but there is absolutely as we said before a link between those who are most grateful and those who have developed the virtue of humility and one of the greatest ways to grow in humility is to pray this prayer which is the litany of humility and it will completely i we promise you it will revolutionize your life but it might hurt it might hurt a lot as you start to grow in humility but it's like bringing the goat into your house filled with (laughs) nine people already right and you will fully when you start to grow in it you it will be like the 
the goat that has been removed and you can finally see yourself and your life for what it is through God's mm. eyes. And therein lies the gratitude, but you have to live with the goat first. Right. Um, so many goat references. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't same, stop I hearing the slang. So oh. yeah, when you're saying bring the goat in, you're not yeah. saying bring in the greatest of all time. No, yeah. no, it's a, um, it's the actual stinky goat. Let's bring the goat sure. in. Yeah. Sure. But you know it's not stinky about it. Is the fact that it's prayer, right? And yeah. I have I had that thought too. It's like prayer is a huge asset in seeking gratitude and humility because when you pray, what are you doing? You're orienting yourself towards God, mm -hmm. right? You're paying attention to God who is the giver of these gifts that you're supposed to be recognizing for what they mean for you, you in regards to his will. Absolutely. So when you talk to God about your life, which, and that is just what prayer is at its most basic form you begin to see just how much he's done for you and how much he has given you. And this can really help when it's difficult to see the good. Yeah. And, you know, it can be so simple. It can be, Lord, I so want to focus on all of the blessings in my life. Help me to focus on everything that I have to be thankful for. And mm -hmm. I know that I have so much to be thankful for. You know, Lord, help me to grow in gratitude in all the areas of my life. Like you could just say that, you know, help me to grow in gratitude. Just start mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being honest in prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Like I had a situation yesterday. It wasn't uh, necessarily to do with gratitude per se, but definitely in the moment, uh, knowing I needed to do something uh, that I didn't want to. I had to go apologize mm. <laughs> for something and I did not want to. And the prayer was, God, I don't want to do this. I hear what you're saying. I know it's what you want me to do, but I just don't want to help me to just do it anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And, and, um, spoiler alert, I did end up doing it <laughs> and it felt great afterwards. There was grace that came from that. But in the moment, the prayer was, uh, help me to grit my teeth and get it done because it's what you want. Mm -hmm. And, and he will help you. He's not a cold God and he does give good things. And one of those good things is appreciation for the good things mm -hmm. <laughs> that he gives you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to start really with the basics, right? If you're kind of really locked in a spirit of ingratitude, which many people are. And I mean, I've been mm -hmm. there. It can really, it's like the demon of ingratitude. It can be latched on to yeah. you. And if you have to kind of, again, fake it till you make it as you're starting to grow out of that, I mean, you can start with just being thankful when you wake up, right? Open your eyes mm -hmm. and be thankful. Be thankful for your beating heart, like feel it. Um, You know, be thankful for when you wake up that you woke up in a bed and under a roof. Yeah. You can start with those things. And as you start to slowly, you know, pull out the weeds from your heart, you'll start to let that, that sunlight in. Oh, now we're getting cheesy. Um, you'll let, the, and the little <laughs> other seedlings will start to spring up of gratitude. <laughs> But it's true. And, you know, there was a it TED Talk yeah. um, in 2013 by a Benedictine monk named Davis, um, sorry, David Steedle. And he pointed out, right, that usually that we wait for something that gives us joy to feel grateful. Like we start with, mm. with the joy feeling and then the gratitude. But it's really the reverse, that the gratitude will breed the joy, right? So when we right. choose the gratitude, joy will inevitably follow. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I really like that advice about starting with the basics. Mm. Um, even just, you know, even to take it a step further, uh, grateful you woke up, period, Yeah. <laughs> in the morning, right? Yeah. You have another day. Yeah. You had, um, that's an incredible gift in and of itself. And if you start your day with that kind of disposition, I really feel like that could transform your mood going into the rest of your time Absolutely. that day. The joy will follow like what you're saying with the TED talk. I know I look at my children and I think when I was a kid, we got McDonald's like twice a year. Like it was a really yeah. big deal to go to <laughs> McDonald's, too. right? Too. And yeah. um, now kids, my kids, everybody's kids, it, it's such an option to have, you know, fast food, Timbits every time you go through the Tim Hortons drive through pizza nights weekly. Like we only had pizza on our birthdays for a pizza party. Mm -hmm. And so just like with our kids in our lives, right? We have so much more than I think even two generations ago than our parents' generation had. We just are in this age of materialism and it really, um, 
makes us not recognize treats and gifts for what they are because it's just our lives are filled with them. You know, we're one click away from next day delivery on Amazon filled with Mm. products that are dirt cheap that are produced, you know, in horrible circumstances across the sea. And we just, it's all there. It's all at our fingertips. So it's really, really hard to be thankful when you have so much stuff, a life of abundance. Yeah, you're right. Like, Uh, uh, gratitude can help foster this detachment from material things too, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, When you appreciate what you have, it's different from coveting or even hoarding for yourself, Mm -hmm. these wants and desires. And I really think that it frees you from that. Um, It frees you from seeing anything as something you deserve, like what we were talking about or have a right to. And if you don't live your life with that kind of expectation in the first place, it really frees you from that materialism, that always wanting the next thing and the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And then inevitably the disappointment that may come with not getting every single thing that you want or the envy of someone else getting it when you feel like you should have been able to as well, or even from feeling indignant when things don't go or come your way. It's actually a a form, it's like an interior form of slavery, right? It's a branch of that interior slavery that we hear about when you are ungrateful because it keeps you beholden to things that distract you from God and from what he's actually leading you towards. It's uh, when you said the words like ungrateful, I just think it's truly one of the most, and I, and I'm sorry to be so bold, but it's really one of the most despicable character traits, right? It's something that really upsets everybody. When you see a child or someone, an adult, especially an adult being ungrateful, it really does Mm -hmm. make people think, nope, forget it. Forget it. Like more than most things, there's a lot of forgivable, you know, personality traits, but I feel like when somebody is truly ungrateful, it is something that makes a lot of people walk away and not want to invest more in that person. And so, you know, I know it, you know, it. we all know that growing in the virtue of gratitude will inevitably change us. But Mm -hmm. like with all of these topics that we talk about when you grow in virtue, I don't know if we fully can understand how powerful it is um, that when we allow this to change us, how it will transform our family, right? And Mm -hmm. how then, as we always say, it all starts at home. So when you are changed and you become more grateful and then that spreads through your family and they become more grateful and start to really grow in gratitude, um, how this will have that, again, that ripple effect out into our communities. Mm -hmm. I love that because what I see so much of right now, and this is just uh, not with anyone in particular, maybe, but en masse, Mm -hmm. a a general feeling to the culture right now is totally one of fear and frenzy and desperation Mm -hmm. and grasping, as it were. Do you get that sense? Like, like every, the world is grasping blindly for something stable to hold on to Mm -hmm. and to stabilize us. And I, you know, in this discussion, I'm starting to see that perhaps a really good place to start to ground ourselves would be just to cultivate being grateful for where we are Mm -hmm. and what we have, like despite everything else going on in the world, if you can just think to yourself, just me right here, right now, where I am, uh, what are five things that I am thankful for, that I am grateful for? I really see that as a grounding uh, exercise that can provide a little bit more of a level ground for us to stand on. And then if practiced with a lot of people, maybe something that could extend to our communities. Mm -hmm. True gratitude is the acknowledgement that ultimately we need each other when we are being thankful, right? For Mm -hmm. something it's been given to us by somebody else. We rely on the gifts of others and we benefit from their talents Even when isolation is forced upon us, like right now, um, we still, like you're saying, have so many things to be thankful for. And we have to choose to freely, and we're talking about freely in your interior and in your exterior life, we have to freely receive what somebody is offering us, right? So there has to be this free exchange of gifts and then gratitude, gifts and gratitude. And this in and of itself is the opposite of isolation, right? When we receive yeah. and, and then give back, we are not isolated, whether we're physically isolated or not, that there can still be this exchange of gifts and talents and kind words and all of these things that we give back and forth. And it is incredibly unifying. Um, this, this temptation right now to throw out all of our history, 
right? To be completely mm-hmm. ungrateful for those who have come before us. It, it is just going to completely erode the trust of the next generation in what we're doing right now, because they're going to think yes. they can't build on the history. And so this idea of teaching gratitude, and sometimes like we were saying, it has to be like the forced gratitude of teaching your child to say thank you when they don't understand what thank you means, right? Say please and thank mm-hmm. you. Um, we may have to force that back on ourselves because I do think that this spirit of ingratitude has really permeated our culture right now, especially in a mood, in this, this mood right now of throwing out everything that has come before us and therefore not being able to be thankful for the good things that have happened in our past. We can't then be shocked when we aren't passing that on to the next generation. So we may have to force ourselves through gritted teeth at the beginning to say thank you for things that we might not necessarily be thankful for. But when we do that, it will start to grow and we will understand again how connected we are and that, yeah, even in this time of great isolation, that we are still completely interconnected in our communities. Mm-hmm. I like what you're saying about how it needs to be a reciprocal thing in order to become a community thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know what? I- I'm actually not sure why this seems to be the case today, but sometimes I feel like there's an unwillingness to maybe be beholden to another person Mm -hmm. or in a lesser way, perhaps uh, an unwillingness to let someone else be put out in service of you. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if you've come across that or if I offer something, um, even my offering has has been kind of rejected out of mm-hmm. maybe a well-intentioned like no 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 don't trouble yourself mm-hmm. it's like no but I'm offering I would like to do something for you and so I think we need to also um, talking about humility humble ourselves to accept these gifts from other people and to practice gratitude for them because it can offer opportunities for other people's sanctifications to do something good for us to have opportunities of sanctification, to practice gratitude and far from putting out other people for wanting to uh, help you out or do something good for you, it can be a means of really extending and expanding this communal attitude of gratitude (laughs) um, in moving forward. St. Mary Euphrasia, and this is the first I've ever heard about her, and I love this quote so much that I'm going to learn more about her later today, but St. Mary Euphrasia said, gratitude is the memory of the heart. And I love this. And like with all memories, we don't lose them. We don't forget our gratitude, but it can be built upon, you know, thankfulness upon thankfulness. Memories of the times that people gave themselves are etched into our hearts. And in moments of despair, we can revisit those memories and look at our lives as a whole, as a series of moments, and be reminded that we do have so much to be thankful for. And this, this is what I use social media for. I know we have mentioned before and earlier in this episode about how social media is often a vice that destroys virtue and how this is very much true when you allow it to use you. But if you choose to see things in a properly ordered way, you will not look at Instagram and covet your neighbor's life. You will look back over your own photos, your own account, memories of your own life, and realize that you do have so much to be thankful for. Michelle quoted Cicero in the opening, and it's worth reiterating this quote. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. Growing in the virtue of gratitude will aid you in growing in virtue in all things. Nothing else can so radically affect the way you view your day, your life, and this world than making the decision to choose gratitude. time for our What We're Loving This Week segment of the show. So Lindsay, what have you been loving this week? Well, just over a week ago, I saw a friend on Instagram um, post something that intrigued me and I messaged her and she was told me to Google on, well, look up on YouTube, the fall ambiance videos. (laughs) And so (laughs) talking about gratitude, I want to publicly thank Leah at Big Thicket Home for sharing these videos with me. So Every once in a while, something comes along that actually impacts my homemaking. And Mm -hmm. it was like when I discovered Huga, right? Like these little things Mm -hmm. all of a sudden completely weave their way throughout my day. And these silly (laughs) fall ambiance videos (laughs) have completely done that. And 
a friend said who just started watching them too he, he's like it's like you know that they're fake because they're co um, computer digitally image mm -hmm. like images right he goes you know they're fake scenes and you don't think you're gonna get into it but then you totally do and you just really end up loving these these ambiance videos so they have hundreds on youtube from fall mm -hmm. to winter to christmas specific and spring and summer and every mood and every nerdy thing like sherlock's office or just a general victorian office in the rain like they just have any possible wow. mood you could want and then they either have like relaxing jazz music in the background or piano or just the sound of the rain and somebody writing they're just you just pop it on and you really do sink into it so I didn't think that my kids or Jason would like them. I did it the first night for myself and I came down the next morning and Jason had one on. And then we came in the Ooh. next afternoon and the kids had one on. So these ambiance videos on YouTube, honestly, I feel like it's exactly what we need to kind of help ease us into this next season. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy because I think I've mentioned to you, like, I feel like your home is one of those videos already. <laughs> so it's funny because like you just have a inception. double dose. Yeah, Inception yeah. <laughs> ambiance videos. Like I'm watching your Insta stories and you're watching the ambiance video in your Insta stories. <laughs> I do Isn't have to say true? I worked yes. very hard, as you know, at, at you know, cultivating that lifestyle. But it, yeah, even for me, it's nice to have that on in the background. Yeah, Jason walked into the living room and I had all the candles going in the fire and it was actually raining outside. And, he, and then it was happening on the screen, just like what you're saying. And he's like, whoa, this is a lot. This is a <laughs> a lot of fall ambiance but yeah it's just really calming and it's something that I've been putting on it in the evenings to help kind of calm the kids down um, which every parent needs right we all need mm -hmm. tips on how to get those kids calmed down as we work towards bedtime so I am telling you you know if you put it on and you roll your eyes at the first minute and think this is super cheesy just just let it keep ha let it happen to you just give walk it 10 away minutes and let it give it 10 minutes as my other trick is right with with those right. other movies and uh and I promise you you're gonna fall in love with these ambiance videos oh that sounds amazing okay I'll try it so what have you been loving this week so we've already started mentioning murder mysteries mm -hmm. on the podcast as mm -hmm. fall gets underway naturally. Mm -hmm. And I've got one that I think will really be satisfying for our fellow murder mystery lovers. Yes. Um, we recently watched a movie called The Lady Vanishes. Mm. And it's actually a remake, I didn't realize this, of the 1938 Alfred Hitchcock movie of the same name. Mm -hmm. So... It follows a very spoiled, rich socialite who decides to travel home from holidays separately from her friends. She's just getting tired of them and their immature antics. Uh, but things get strange on the train when a woman that she meets suddenly vanishes as the train is traveling and in motion. So she has to figure out, you know, was this woman ever real? If so, where is she? Where did she go? Um, who can she trust? She's getting mixed messages, mis mixed signals from some of the other passengers on the train. And so it, it's a really fantastic psychological thriller, very typical Hitchcock. And I think it would be a, actually a great Huga movie for the weekend. Mm, love it. I'm so excited to watch that. It's been in my watch list for a while and so yes. you have just given me that last push so you watch an ambiance video i'll watch that movie tonight okay. and we will just hooga it down we'll just explode with fall ambiance <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and we'll be so thankful for it leading into thanksgiving yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's going to do it for us this week. If you want to get in touch and chat with us about our topic today, you can find us on our website, www.themodernlady1950.wordpress.com or leave us a comment on Facebook or Instagram at The Modern Lady Podcast. I'm Michelle Sachs and you can find me on Instagram at mmsachs. And I'm Lindsay Murray and you can find me on Instagram at Lindsay Homemaker. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great week and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.